If you feel like you're constantly fighting your own hunger and trying to lose weight, I need you to know something. You aren't failing, it's your satiety signals that are failing. It's not a willpower problem, it's a biology problem. And GPL medications like a Zempic work because they fix these broken signals chemically. But if you want to fix them naturally, I'm going to show you how to activate what I call nature's azempic. This isn't just generic advice like eat more vegetables. I'm going to give you five specific levers and one of them is constantly ignored. Yet it's often the difference between I can't stick to anything and weight loss that finally works. And at the end, I'll show you how to identify which lever matters the most for you. So you're not trying to do everything at once. I'm Michael Smith, a naturopathic doctor, but I'm not your doctor, and this is just educational advice, not personal medical advice. Let's first talk about how medications like Azempic and semaglutide work. GPL-1 medications work because they pull a few major levers. They reduce appetite, they improve blood sugar control, and they slow down digestion, sometimes a lot. And that's partly why they can be so effective but it's also partly why many people struggle with side effects like nausea, reflux, constipation, and gut motility issues. And recent research has connected these medications to digestive problems like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, also known as SIBO. So this video is not about medications versus their natural approach. The drugs will always be faster for weight loss, but they'll come with more side effects. Let's talk about how you can use natural options to mimic the effects of a Zempic and lose weight naturally. There are five levers we're going to use to mimic the metabolic effects of GLP-1 naturally. The first lever is fiber. If you only do one thing from this video, start with fiber. Not because it's trendy, but because fiber changes the signals that drive hunger. And here's what the right type of fiber can do. It increases fullness, it slows down the absorption of carbs, it smooths out blood sugar spikes, and it supports the gut bacteria that produce compounds that help with satiety signaling. This is the natural way to suppress appetite. And here's a simple way to make this work because you need to start with the right fiber. And you also don't want to add high amounts of fiber too quickly because that leads to bloating and excess gas. Just add a little bit of fiber each day and as your microbiome adjusts, you'll be able to tolerate a lot more. The best option is adding psyllium to water before your biggest meal. Start low with one teaspoon a day and you can do this 15 to 30 minutes before eating. And once your microbiome adjusts, you can increase this to twice daily. Other options include legume-based meals like lentils, chickpeas, beans. Once again, start low so they don't produce a lot of gas, but they can help with satiety. Oats and barley and other carbs that help with good levels of fiber and also help with satiety. And also have more vegetables with your meals. But just remember, if you bloat easy, have IBS, start on a lower fiber and build up slowly. The second lever is blood sugar stability. A lot of people think they just lack discipline, but what they're really experiencing is a spike, then a crash in their blood sugar levels. When blood sugar is unstable, cravings get louder and adherence gets harder. Fiber can help with this, but there's one other supplement that can help the right person, and this is berberine. I don't think of berberine as a fat burner. I think of it as a metabolic support tool so that can help to reduce cravings and balance insulin levels and blood glucose levels. If you're on diabetic medications or if you're prone to low blood sugar, don't add berberine without monitoring your blood sugar levels. Or this may lead to reduced need for your medications. And it's not safe during pregnancy or breastfeeding. The third lever is the microbiome lever. Fiber can also help with the microbiome, but there's a strain of probiotic called Akkermansia that has a mild azempic effect on your metabolism. It's not a magic pill to lose weight, but it can help, especially if you do a GI map test or a gut zuma, and they show that you're low in Akkermansia. Akkermansia and its metabolites stimulate GLP-1 secretion from cells, and this improves insulin sensitivity, slows gastric emptying, and suppresses the appetite. You can also add polyphenol-rich plant foods like berries, pomegranate, green tea, colorful vegetables, because these help the growth of Akkermansia. And you can also add a good quality Akkermansia probiotic, especially if your stool tests show that low levels or even zero levels are on your results. And this can happen after antibiotics. I'll put a link in the description to a good quality Akkermansia supplement. The fourth lever is the timing of your meals and movement. This lever is often underestimated because it sounds too simple, but it's one of the closest natural mechanisms we have for appetite and glucose control. 
Here are three timing rules that work. Rule one is eat protein and vegetables first and starches later. They can help to help you fill you up so you don't overeat. For many people alone, this flattens that glucose curve. Rule two is a 10 minute walk after meals, especially after a dinner or any big meal. This can help to improve glucose handling and reduce late night cravings. And if you can't go for a walk, doing some other exercise at home like squats for a few minutes will also help with glucose control. Rule number three is eat enough protein. Especially if you're finding your late night snacking, you may need to increase your protein during the day. Aim for 1.5 grams of protein per kilo of body weight as a minimum. Now we get to that lever that most people ignore, yet it often determines whether any of this works. If your sleep is poor, if you're chronically stressed, your hunger signals are gonna change. Cravings get louder, energy gets lower, and your brain wants those quick carbs. And that's when your adherence to this all collapses. So if you're doing everything right and you still feel it's impossible, this is often the missing piece. Here are two simple things you can do. First, pick a consistent sleep and wake up time for seven days. Both of these are important and also allow yourself enough time in bed to get eight hours of sleep. Second, set a kitchen close time so you're not negotiating with late night cravings. Avoid eating in that two to three hours before bed. That will also help with your good quality sleep. And if stress is the main driver, try going for a walk, doing breath work, stretching, journaling. These can all help to lower down nighttime cortisol. Now let's talk about how to choose your starting lever because the biggest mistake is trying to do everything at once and getting overwhelmed. If constant hunger is the issue, start with fiber and maybe taking berberine. If cravings and crashes are your main issue, start with timing and movement of your food and going for a walk afterwards. If your lab suggests insulin resistance, start with fiber and then consider adding in the berberine supplement. And if late night stacking and off that why but tired feeling is the main issue, start with your sleep and stress. The most important thing is consistency. The best plan on paper is useless if it causes bloating, fatigue, overwhelm, and you quit after a week. So your strategy is simple. Pick one to two levers and do them for seven to 14 days, and then layer in the next lever. Now, if you're doing these levers consistently for several weeks and you're not seeing meaningful changes, especially if weight loss or it feels unnaturally difficult, then it's time to troubleshoot. Here are the common reasons people stall with their weight loss. First one is under eating protein and snacking on healthy foods that could be high calorie. Having a lot of liquid calories from sweetened coffees, alcohol, smoothies, and they often push up the calories much higher than you're thinking. You're not sleeping enough or you have sleep apnea. You're constipated. Yes, constipation can mask fat loss on the scale. And certain medications can also make fat loss harder. And if you're doing everything right, it could be worth doing some blood tests to find out what's going on. I would start with doing a thyroid panel. Your thyroid's important for your metabolism. And don't just check TSH, also check 3T4 and 3T3. Most doctors only check TSH and say everything's fine. Check glucose levels, but also insulin and A1C levels. Your insulin levels may still be high. And also check the basic blood markers like iron, ferritin, B12, vitamin D, and the usual CBC and CMP. Potentially checking sex hormones. For men, it could be low testosterone and high estrogen. For women, it could be estrogen dominance also. If you have trouble getting your doctor to do the testing, I'll leave links in the description and we can organize the testing through Planet Naturopath. And let me know if you have any questions or comments below, especially if you found anything that's worked really well for you. 